Rock Solid Radio wants to thank Maxwell Construction, who has been our sponsor since the very beginning. For over 30 years, Maxwell has delivered the highest quality projects by holding to their core values of customer satisfaction, positive attitude, respect, and excellence. So if you have any kind of commercial construction need, give Maxwell Construction a call today at 812-537-2200. Welcome to Rock Solid Families. Why did you pause? Guys, guess what? (laughs) Breaking news, breaking news. Hey, if you are used to listening to Rock Solid Radio, well, guess what? Today you are listening to Rock Solid Families. We made an executive decision. You just did that to mess me up. That's all right. I'm messing you up. <laughs> Welcome. Right. This is Linda and Merle Hutchinson with Rock Solid Families. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we are, uh, j- just to, to formally state it, we are mm. going to transition a rebranding of our show. W- a little history there. We were always Rock Solid Radio because we were actually on the radio station. And mm-hmm. so, you know, it just made sense on the radio station to call it radio. Yeah, the first year. <laughs> but we haven't been on there for a few years. And we finally were like, you know, it would really help people Mm. if they're doing a search for help with families or something like that, that we had something that attached us to the name within our title. But our, our sign still says yeah. Rock Solid Radio. So <laughs> I said we are in the process of rebranding. And so the sign behind us, go. we're going to get that mm. one altered and get yeah. that changed to Rock Solid Families. But anyway, welcome mm. to our brand new <laughs> five years old rock solid oh, family. Can you believe radio. it's been five years? That's since. crazy. So we started yeah. on the radio as well as opening up our um, office, our coaching organization, mm-hmm. all in 2018. So it is, it's been five years. We're celebrating all year long. It's kind of like when my grandma used to have her birthday, she would celebrate all month long. We're just celebrating all year long. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. different things happen at different times. Yeah. 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 So, uh, man, I'm, I am looking forward to today's show. Yeah, it's a big topic. I'm looking forward to it because I think it is something that, um, you know, we have to start helping parents with. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's coming to us on a pretty frequent basis now. Maybe not it in particular, but the symptoms of, the mm-hmm. results of are coming to us. And so we're going to ask a very simple question. And before mm-hmm. you answer, just <laughs> listen, because we all fall in this category. And that is, you know, are you an insecure parent? Mm-hmm. Are you an insecure parent? And um, you and I would be lying if we said if we said no, not, that's not us. We got that. Mm. We have our insecurities within yeah. our parenting. We all do. Yep. Okay, drives our decisions. Yeah, yep. and and so we're going to talk today about why that has mm. um, grown and morphed into something that's really, really dangerous for our kids, probably even way more than our kids. For our culture, uh, society at large, it's a very dangerous thing. And this isn't just for if you have small children at home. This is if you are a parent of an adult child, because, you know, as we're going to share in the show, a lot of our clients come in with adult children and grandchildren, and and they're, they're butting up ahead their heads against each other and they're Mm -hmm. kind of having conflict. And it comes to see that this parent, even of adult children, has a lot of insecurities that they have had for years and goes back way when they were children or when their parent parented them. And so we're going to really talk about where do those insecurities and those fears come from? Yeah. And and like we said, like before you get all full of yourself thinking that you are totally (laughs) secure in this, you have Mm. to remember that these come from generation to generation. Like, uh, an example could be um, if you grew up in the Depression era, mm-hmm. which we, our grandparents, did grow up in that Depression era. I thought you were going to say we did. I'm like, oh, don't make well, no. us think that we're and that old. So, um, and so my dad, um, who my, my grandparent was actually out working mm-hmm. and, and trying to struggle through that. And so my dad was a little kid. He, he was not as impacted mm-hmm. as my grandparents um, but my grandparents, I mean, when you got a dollar, hmm. you hung on to it because you yeah. didn't know when you were going to get it again. And so we talk about that generation as, mm-hmm. man, they were tight with their money. Yeah. And so it became an insecurity that really raised up that whole generation that once they experienced mm-hmm. that drought of money, 
that mm-hmm. that fear that it couldn't come across again. They were going to double down on the security uh, fortifying of it. So yeah. that that's an example of just what we're talking about. You may not think that you're into an insecurity right now, but we're going to actually point some out that we actually know and yeah. we're seeing within our society today. Mm-hmm. All right, in our in our office. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about you? Do you grow up with any insecurities through your parents that your parents had that? kind of leaked on to you well, in terms I mean, of how they raise you? My mom was an ER nurse. And so she, yeah, that, yeah, that, that's <laughs> she had a fun. ton of stories, but she also had some insecurities about things that we were allowed to do and not allowed to do. And so that's why there was not allowed to be any mm. guns in our home. My yep. father was not allowed to shoot them, own them, have them in our home, anything like that because of the things that, she, you know, a lot of gunshot wounds yep. and things. Cause she was a, she was a third shift ER nurse. So she had through the evening and the night, yep. right. Or we weren't allowed, you know, a lot of insecurities about riding motorcycles or bikes in yeah. different places. And so a lot of that came from my mom's fears and insecurities that she saw at work. Yeah. Yeah. And How about I mean, you? It, well, I just want to point to that. Like when I had met you guys and I knew that your dad had hunted, he had shared stories about mm-hmm. him hunting and stuff. And I'm like, well, why don't you hunt anymore? And at first yeah. I was kind of dismissive of that reason. Well, you know, cause it makes, it makes uh, your mom very mm-hmm. uncomfortable. And I'm like, but then I didn't really think far enough to realize on a regular basis, she was stitching people up and yeah. caring for people who had severe gun wounds mm-hmm. and things like that and motorcycle wrecks. And so if you see that on a regular basis, you, you can't just say, oh, well, I think you're overreacting. Yeah. Those are something you have to learn to react to. Yeah. My dad okay. and my brothers were never allowed to own a motorcycle. Yeah. And so yeah. it came from her fear. Yeah. yeah. What about you? Um, you know, I noticed um, neither of my parents in particular were very good at school. They were both very hands-on mm. people. Okay. Very. Um, Dad was an amazing mechanic. Yeah. A great mechanic. And he hated school. Mm. And um, and school hated him. <laughs> <laughs> Even though he was a lot of fun, he had a great personality. Mm. Um, sitting in that thing was really difficult in a desk and, and that. And so he got himself into a lot of trouble and... Um, because he wasn't a troublemaker by nature, he every, just walking in and getting in trouble for not having schoolwork done mm. <laughs> was a reminder every day that mm. he wasn't good enough. Yeah. And so he, he developed kind of a, I'm going to just say kind of a, this anger um, about school mm. um, that was resistant. And when he got out of school, when he, as soon as he could, he, was, he had this attitude, I'll show you. Yeah. And so he was successful in his life of owning business and all that sort of thing and and a great mechanic. But what that did to us is my parents never lifted education up in our house Mm. Mm. because it it was so hard for them and they didn't like how they were treated in it. But they they never talked bad about it. They just never talked it up. Right. Like their they, own insecurities kind of yeah, drove Yeah, they're that. like, you have to go to school because yeah. that's what you have to do. Yeah. But they're never like, you need to go to college. Yeah. You need to study. You need to get these grades. This is These are the doors that will be open mm-hmm. for you. That did not come out of them. Mm. And, and I, you know, I just thought, well, everybody was like that, you know. Mm. And I was the first kid in all of our family that ever went to college. Mm. And I don't say this in any way of Boastful, other, other right? than just to say yeah. like, the only reason why I went is because I didn't know what I was supposed to do. <laughs> so I was more undecided and hanging yeah. around and doing nothing wasn't a really good option. My parents never walked on the campus of Northern Kentucky University, mm-hmm. never walked on it, never filled out any paperwork, never mm-hmm. did anything. I did everything. And the only time they ever walked on the campus was they did both attend my graduation. Yeah, isn't that crazy? And so, so it was their insecurity mm-hmm from their experience of negative experience Mm -hmm. of education that just really um, dampened, it dampened um, how they um, pushed education. education. Yeah. 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 Well, that's what we're going to be talking about today is, are you an insecure parent? And we all have our insecurities. And so are we passing that along to our children and how is that affecting them and even our grandchildren? So before we do and dig into that even more, we want to thank our sponsors. Yeah. So we want to thank Maxwell Construction and Casey's Outdoor Solutions for coming alongside of Rock Solid Families slash radio and (laughs) just continuing to support the messaging that we are able to put out. So we want to thank those guys. So, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you're in the need of any of the things that they provide, 
side, whether it's construction or landscape or whatever, mm -hmm. please check them out to see what they can do to help you out. Yeah. And again, Rock Solid Families is a faith-based coaching organization in the greater Cincinnati, Ohio area. And if there is anything that we can do, we have a whole host of um, resources on our website at rocksolidfamilies.org or check out our podcast. You know, we have done this now for five years and last week's show was a great show. Mm. We had a special guest from New Life Ministries. Um, they do a t call in counseling radio show called New Life Live. I highly recommend it. They do a daily show. And so, man, you can, I just learned so much from that show every day. And so Becky was on. She was amazing. And she was I was one of kind the of hosts. a third wheel in that show. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so she's one of the therapists that speak and, and kind of counsel on that show. And so check out newlife.org, I think it is, um, newlife.com, sorry, newlife.com. And so that would be a great show. But check out our podcast from last week when we interviewed Becky Brown. Very good. Good stuff. Yeah. Okay, so let's get into a little bit of our, our are you an insecure parent? And so <laughs> we've, we've talked a little bit already about some of the insecurities that come up just mm -hmm. through our generation that we happen to be in or mm. a family situation that we happen to be in, or maybe there's just some DNA genetics there that make mm -hmm. us more prone to certain things. But the bottom line is we all have fears and insecurities yep. and they start to um, be part of what steers us in life. But something has happened, hon, I think that that we have to point out um, that has put accelerant um, fuel mm. on this issue. And that is the blessing and the curse of information oh, production. Overload. <laughs> and seeking. Right. Because, yeah. um, you know. We now have information. I forget the statistic on this because it changes every day that you look it up. But it used to double like every, mm. you know, every 30 years and Crazy. then every 10 years. And then it's like, you know, every three days, the, the <laughs> amount of information that's out available on the planet mm. doubles, you know. And so... Um, while that seems great, and it has been in so many ways, I can just, I don't have to travel to libraries or anything anymore. I can just the sit The World there. Book Encyclopedias. Remember those? Yeah, like the we had a set. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> a whole set of, and, and you know, if you're young, you probably don't even know what those are, but yeah. we had we had to buy a set, you know, and have them in, and the minute you bought it, it was outdated. Yeah, but, right? but you held on to it for <laughs> oh, 10, 15 absolutely, years, yeah. you know. Countries didn't change borders like they do today, yeah, so yeah. yeah. But so now we've got this information coming at us like crazy. Mm. But that information overload, as you refer mm -hmm. to it as, is something that makes mm. us hyper alert. Yeah. All right. But I think kind of there's something that's that's we should be a little bit mindful about too is the type of stuff we search out. Oh yeah. Yeah. The yeah. You have an itch, news. you have an itch or a cough and all of a sudden you think you have throat cancer, right? right. Like it is the and, and the challenge with this information overload is that it feeds our insecurities. Okay. Yeah. Instead of resting our anxious mind. And so I, I have recently said a lot, um, whatever you feed grows. <laughs> and honey, a perfect example of this is our daughter who just had- <laughs> well, She does keep growing. You're, <laughs> yeah. you're right. No, but yeah, that's true. We keep feeding her. But no, she just had surgery on her wisdom teeth. Okay. And so she has had this scheduled for three months <laughs> and she has researched and Googled every kind of scenario, right? She And she has talked to everybody and their brother about this surgery. Mm -hmm. And so for three months, she has been gathering every horror story and every worst case scenario. And so she has built this up to being so much. And you and I both had our wisdom teeth taken out. And I don't remember there being such an anxiousness about it, but we didn't have the information, right? We I'm didn't, glad I didn't have the holy information cow. because mine was a dreadful experience. <laughs> Yours was, yeah. You're spitting bones out <laughs> yeah, from months later. Good. It was not good. But you know, the point is, is that she has reveled in this and she has kind of wallowed in this because of the information that she can either Google or she can Snapchat her friends or she can talk to them all. And it, it's crazy. It's just whatever you feed mm. grows. And so in her mind, the last three months, the anxiety level has just grown. And thankfully it went well. She's fine. She did have some goofy moments, but <laughs> you know, it wasn't anything what she has made out to be. She was having nightmares yeah, yeah. before it all. Well, I, I, without taking too much time, I want to explain a little bit about what happens here and mm -hmm. how this uh, works with the human nature. And, mm -hmm. and the human nature is one of survival. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. Every day you, you know, especially imagine living out in the, in the, the bush country, right. Where you have to survive. And so you mm-hmm. start to think about whatever could be of harm or danger to you. Mm-hmm. And so you have to always be on alert for that. And you have to set things up to be able to handle that. You don't sit around wondering, how am I going to handle a sunny, beautiful day today? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, that's not where, unless we, it's the only one you get in a year, then right? that's, that's the exception, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it's still not a danger. It doesn't threaten you. And so the idea here is we are always, our survival mode that we Mm. have that is wired into us is one that always is looking for what could um, damage us, could Mm -hmm. hurt us. Okay. And so that's how we are focused. And that's part of how we're, Mm -hmm. how God wired us for Mm -hmm. survival. Okay. But the problem with that is when that is our instinct, um, we become hyper focused on mm. anything that could hurt us. Yeah. Okay. Well, now, as we talked about, the amount of information that's coming to us, mm-hmm. every day I find out what things I should not be eating because they're going to kill me. Mm-hmm. I find out, you know, what's going to uh, ruin my life, all of these different things. And huh, there's actually a term for this now. And I'm not, I'm not taking this into any kind of debate in any kind of political realm. <laughs> well, there's a term that we are using oh. now called woke, mm. right? This is is wokeness this is and and the woke idea is this whole idea of it is time for we need to wake up mm. to what lurks out there danger danger right, right. we need to wake up to this because mm. these things are knocking on your door and these things could and it could be climate change or it could be too much cholesterol in your conspiracy diet conspiracy theories yeah right and so this wokeness is mm. now epidemic <sighs> Wow. It's epidemic. Yeah. And is all it has done is create nothing but insecurities. Mm. It really hasn't helped anybody be more secure <laughs> no. and, and better and no. better off. It's it really not. freaked us out yeah. to the point where we are half crazy. And mm-hmm. so now take all of that that we just talked about, mm-hmm. right, and bring it into how you're actually parenting. Mm. And consider how you're parenting now oh, than what a parent may have parented like, uh, let's just say, 40 or 50 years ago. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so now we realize, oh, crud, I am so over the top woke, so to speak, <laughs> in my parenting. And I'm not taking that down in any clinical realm. I'm, in other words, I'm trying to be so awake of right. everything that could right. attack my so kids. So aware, right? Yeah. Hypervigilant, right? Yeah. The more we per- attempt to protect our kids, though, the more we handicap them in, in this life that's worth living. I mean, we almost kind of kind of show them that it's not worth living. Like right. don't walk out of your house. Don't talk to anybody. Don't don't be friendly with anybody because they might attack you. They might kidnap you. They might steal from you. And and hun, I had a client just recently who began to realize how her insecurities and her anxiousness and fears had really affected how she parented raising mm-hmm. her children. And now they're adults and she's lived in this constant state of not being good enough and this guilt of feeling like mm-hmm. she's failed her children or she's damaged her children. And so, you know, because of that, it, it really has created this barrier between her and her adult children and grandchildren. Yeah. And so she came in to get some help. And we've been working through the book Boundaries Together by mm. Dr. Henry Cloud and Dr. John Townsend. And recently she just said there was one line in the book, one quote in the book that literally stopped her in her tracks so much so that she she took a picture of it and sent it to her adult daughter and said, is this how you felt is this what I did to you? Mm. And here's the line, and this is a this is a powerful statement that we're really gonna, it really is what we're talking about today. So it was pretty fitting that it came mm. in. And this is the, the line that stopped her dead in her tracks. Here's from the book Boundaries. To rescue people from the natural consequences of their behavior is to render them powerless. Mm -hmm. And and it doesn't even have to be bad decisions. It could just be the bubble wrap you want to put around them to keep them from getting hurt or experiencing pain. And and so to rescue people from the natural consequences of their behavior is to render them powerless. Mm. uh, I I mean, we talk about this all the time. We always talk about you got to empower your kids Mm -hmm. to take on the challenges. We're going to get into that today. But I Here's something that we see, I don't know, I get at least in our modern generation of, of since we've been around trying to raise kids, mm. the number of adults who are choosing not to have children at all yes. because they say, why would anybody yes. bring kids into this world? They're so scared. And and I, I mean, really, yeah. like think about that. Like, 
Well, I, mm. I, how could you ever bring kids in this world? I'm not, we're not even going to have kids. Yeah. And so the, the fear being mm. awakened to the insecure or awakened to the dangers mm. now has basically shut you down. And yeah. so like up front, like that's not what we subscribe to here. No. Okay. We're, like we believe we are to create children and we believe <laughs> that, you know, there's this saying, and, and as we are recording this, we're coming into Resurrection Sunday <laughs> and Resurrection Sunday, Easter is the thing that gives us hope. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, we don't have any idea what the future is going to hold. Mm-hmm. And we don't know whether we're going to protect our kids from all things, mm-hmm. but we know that God gives away and provides. And so we just need to be along for this to figure out, okay, how is God going to empower us. Okay, so we're going to have to have a disclaimer here because we know there's people that are listening who have experienced some horrific tragedies, mm. some horrific fears and um, situations that have scarred you and traumatized you, whether it be warfare. Um, my mom was at the Beverly Hills Supper Club fire in May of 1977, I think it was. And mm-hmm. I remember it as a kid, my mom and some friends went to this very crowded supper club where there was a special singer going on that night. And there was a fire where 100 and I think 169 people died, including mm-hmm. one of her friends. And after that tragedy, my mom was paralyzed in fear. Mm-hmm. She wouldn't go to a restaurant or anywhere crowded for months. And when she finally did, she would always have to be sitting by an exit. And, and so I understand that there are people out there listening who have experienced and they're like, you don't know what we've ha- had happen. Maybe they've been sexually abused. Mm-hmm. Maybe they have experienced a tragic death. So uh, we understand that, but we can't let that paralyze us in fear and keep our children from experiencing life to the fullest the way God has intended. So the disclaimer is we understand there's tragedies. We understand there's real things out there that are dangerous, but we've got to really evaluate those and how we parent and treat our children. All right. So get out your pen and paper. Yes. Because we are going to give you our five insecurity busters. <laughs> Did you come up with that I, I title? I made that up. Okay. <laughs> insecurity busters. There the, you go. These are things that will help you kind of bust and and basically break down and go, hmm, what do I need to do with this? In parenting. And, We're talking about in the parenting realm, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, and, and, and this leaks out into all parts of your life, mm-hmm. right? But we are specifically talking about parenting. Yeah. Okay. And so the very first one is really right down the line, hun, that you just talked about. Mm-hmm. The very first one that you have to get a grip on is identify your own fears and how they came to be yep. and how they are influencing your parenting. So yeah. you shared that perfect story, hun, with um, the Beverly Hills Supper Club and your mom being in attendance. I actually remember I was camping out with a buddy that night mm. and we had a little transistor radio and, and <laughs> they broke in. They broke in and mm. we're talking all about that fire and it mm-hmm. was a big, big deal. Yeah. And so for her to actually be there, but then how that trickles in Mm -hmm. to uh, good or bad, right? Like uh, it's, listen, she didn't want to go to uh, crowded places because she didn't want anybody to be endangered. But now do we stop going to anything that's crowded? Yeah, yeah. So um, I I wrote about this in one of our recent blogs going going downhill fast, but um, fourth grade bicycle accident, my friend and I going down the hill, traded bikes, her brakes didn't work. I ran into my grandmother's house and landed in the hospital for three days. That's a, like a micro version of that yeah. story. But here's the fear that came out of that. I had an intense fear of going downhill fast. Mm-hmm. And so when we had children and when we started dating even before we had children, um, I didn't want to bicycle with you. I especially didn't want to go downhill. You hills. still don't. I, I still don't. <laughs> but the, the hill part. And so when we had children... Thankfully, you love to ride bikes and you're the one that taught the boys and would go with the boys and would go down fast. And I was the one, I mean, they would probably be wrapped in bubble wrap and have to be in a padded flat track <laughs> if, if they were going to follow my lead. But because you overcame those, but it was really weird. I, I wasn't until I was married before I realized how intense that fear was. Mm. Even skiing. Yeah. I, I didn't like to ski. You're the one that took the boys skiing. And so thankfully you were there to kind of bust my insecurities. Right. But so these are the things like, okay, we have to recognize how this is maybe tainted 
our life. Mm -hmm. And now what are we doing to either pass it on or yeah. basically nullify it and get it out of um, our parenting? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's number one. Identify yeah. your own fears, where they came from, and then how they might be leaking in to yeah. your parenting. Okay, here's number two. You need to equip your children for difficult times because let's face it, they're going to come. Okay, we cannot storm free. We can't provide a storm free life for our children, but we can help them storm proof it. And so um, take the philosophy that you mentioned, hon, to give a man a fish, you teach him for a day. He, but you, you, he eats for the day. Oh, he eats for the day. You sorry. said you teach us for oh, a day. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Give him a fish, he eats for a day, but teach him how to fish and then he can eat for a lifetime. Mm. And so we've got to equip and teach our children how to face difficult times because they are going to be there. Guys, this leaks into so mm. many different areas. Okay. Yeah. I mean, this is, we saw this all the time in the school setting, and this is parents rescuing. I wrote mm. an entire article oh. called, Are You a Rescue Parent? It went viral. Yeah, and, and this is just that idea of parents showing up to school because mm -hmm. uh, little Johnny forgot his his book bag, or you know they they didn't get uh, this done on the project because the family was busy last night. So they call the teacher and they are looking mm -hmm. for the excuse out, and it's like no, no. No, okay? <laughs> You're rescuing them for that moment mm -hmm. and they're never having to grapple with and wrestle with the problem solving of owning something and then fixing it or doing yeah. what it takes to not let it happen again. And so please equip your kids for the problem solving. All right, that doesn't give them, you don't give them the solution. You say, what can we do about it? You yeah. start prompting the problem solving. Yeah. And so the idea of, of teaching them to fish rather than giving them the fish mm. is so much what this is about, guys. Yeah. Okay, so are you saying that we should just let our kids ride a bike off a cliff? We're going to go back to our disclaimer alert and go. <laughs> so we have age appropriate um, um, restrictions in terms of how we're going to protect our kids. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, if they're 15 years old and they want to ride off a cliff, it's like, well, you're pretty stupid, but go <laughs> ahead. Okay. I think our sons <laughs> and our nephew rode their bike off of a ramp into a pond. Yeah. And it, it was basically like a cliff. And you know what? It, and guess it, what? The bike gonna... sank. So it lasted one time. And, and the only <laughs> thing that they said is... Uh, I good. will never do that. That hurts so bad. And I'm like, yeah, well, yeah, duh. It kind of hurts when those things. Yeah. So, so guys, we are talking about some common sense here, mm -hmm. but we're also uh, we are always um, because we have insight. All right, we have wisdom. We know natural consequences that can be expected, mm -hmm. and certain things we have to evaluate and go. You know, that could cost. Um, you know, a busted up leg hmm. that could cost him a few dollars that could cost him some tears that could cost him a little uneasiness. Yeah. That's a pretty good price to pay. They <laughs> can pay that. Because they were high schoolers at the time. Now, yeah. if they were like first grade, that's a different story, yeah. right? Yeah. But then when we talk about, we're not talking about life risking things, right. you know, where we're actually going, oh my gosh, if this doesn't go right, the, the alternative is is death. Like, so we're that's not what we're talking about here, right. okay? Yeah. So that's why number three is to teach your kids how to assess risk versus reward when making decisions. And again, how what you let your first grader do is going to be different than what you let your 18-year-old do. That's why uh, sky jumping, skydiving, mm -hmm. you have to be over 18. A lot mm -hmm. of kids do it on their 18th birthday because they get to make a decision. Do I want to jump out of an airplane? I'm way over 18 and I've never jumped out of an airplane. I don't <laughs> risk versus reward. I'm not really sure it's going to be on my bucket list. Well, and, and it has to be the risk versus reward for that person. Exactly. You know, because like, oh, I jumped out of a plane. Well, what was the reward? Was it fun? No, like the whole thing was miserable and boring. Oh, yeah. well, why did you? Okay. So yeah. it has to be within that person to say this reward. Yeah. will be worth this risk. And this is something mm -hmm. that that we, we want to teach our kids this, even in their behavior, mm -hmm. for whether they're going to do things that could get them in trouble or not, yeah. okay? And so literally, I want my kids to know the best I can in advance, mm -hmm. if you do this, it, it could cost you this, right. okay? Yeah. So at the age of seven and eight years old, they're starting to weigh. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Mom called me to come in, but I could stay out here and play for another 15 minutes. And your kid actually has to go through the process of 15 more minutes of play yeah. <laughs> or coming in right now. Yeah. And again, 
this is not about them being perfect and right. It's about them weighing and right. assessing, are, am I ready to handle the consequence if I come in 15 right. minutes late and I have to go to bed an hour early? Yeah. I know of any, a, a, an adult man who, as a child, kept telling his mom that he was going to be in the military. And she said, absolutely not, absolutely not. And then he got to be an adult and he said, I want to join the military. And she said, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. And he felt this obligation and in her insecurity that, and, and she would literally say like, I'll never forgive you. Or I, I would never be able to live with myself. And so she literally put so much insecurity in him and so many, so many ultimatums that he did not do that. And he talks about how he regrets that decision. Like that was what he wanted to do. But the insecurity of his mom kind of drove his life career decisions. Mm -hmm. And so as a parent, is that really what you want to do? Is that is that how you want to parent and and feeding those insecurities and those fears into your children, even when they become an adult? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So number four. Yeah. Then is um if we're not going to save our kids, then that means we are going to they're going to experience difficulty. And so number four is then we have to teach them resilience, mm. okay? We have to teach them how to handle the negative consequence or the setback or the hurt or the failure. Because when they fall and we walk by them and go, well, I told you so, mm. that, that, that does nothing to actually help them grow through to be the person that God designed them to be. Mm -hmm. And so we teach them that resilience, the things about, okay, so what did you learn from it? Mm -hmm. So get back up. You're not dead. You're you're okay. Brush yourself off. Mm -hmm. These are things that, you know, they can sound cliche, but you honestly, uh, you, you know, you, you talk to anybody who's ever had any success in life. The first thing that they'll tell you is, well, you don't even know how many failures I've had in <laughs> yeah, life. Yeah, exactly. Okay. How many times I got knocked down. I I just want to shout out to our sons and our, our daughter-in-laws who have, we have five grandchildren and, you know, little Teddy isn't walking yet, but our oldest four, these, especially moms, because moms with them day in and day out a lot more than the dads are, but the resilience they're teaching these kiddos, whether it be they fall flat. Remember that video of our grandson falling, <laughs> granddaughter falling flat in the mud? No, that and, was... That was Dietrich. Oh, was that, that was our, was our grandson. grandson. And, <laughs> and his sister, Lucy, was laughing at him. But worse yet, oh. his mom was laughing at but him. But you know, though, it wasn't like, oh my gosh, he's going to, you know, it was like, you're okay. And he just got up and kept on moving. Covered or, in mud, oh. little bitty guy. Yeah, hiking was, in the woods. I mean. Yeah, just face planted. And oh. so even when you watch the video, because she was watching him and he's running yeah. up the trail yeah. and all of a sudden he <laughs> slips and face plants and you hear her starting to laugh. Mm -hmm. Now, the number of parents that we would run into today where they'd oh. go, oh my gosh. Was... Yeah. And she was like, no. And she just, he looked up at her with these big eyes. Oh. He didn't know whether to cry or not. And yeah. she was like, you're, you're okay, fine. buddy. Just yeah. get up. Yeah. And yeah. he got up and started laughing. Yeah. And that right there yeah. was like the resilience that he or, needs to be able to go forward. Or again. our son and daughter-in-law used and their family used to live in Hawaii. And so we went to visit them. And remember hiking up that mountain? Oh, wow. We did some I'm great dying. Hikes, yeah. I'm dying. And these little guys, they are hiking on their own, climbing rocks and up and but I was like, how in the world? I I'm like sucking wind here. <laughs> and, and they're like four or five years old. And they are just whoop, up that mountain. Yep. And it was like no big deal because their parents had taught them resilience resilience on persevering, persevering and pushing through when it gets hard. Yeah. So bottom line on that, guys, like t t d you don't dismiss their setback and you right. don't dismiss their pain. What you do is you go, okay, so what are you going to do about it? Get yeah. back up and you encourage yeah. them to get back up. All right. Now, I will say, here's the disclaimer, do not dismiss the emotion, okay? It's important that we have empathy, that we acknowledge, okay, that they're pain or they're, they're sad or they're scared, okay? I'm not saying you dismiss that because that's really where a lot of these stuffed emotions come right. from, okay? But it's working through that fear, it's pushing through that pain is really going to be where the resistance come, resilience comes from. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. Okay, and so number five, number five, mm. teaching your kids actually how to use their faith mm. as a source of strength and comfort and healing. Yeah. So 
you know, we are rock solid families. We are a faith based ministry. And, you know, there has been a time or two in all of our work that we would get people that would say, I don't really know if I believe any of that Christian stuff. Mm -hmm. I think people use it as a crutch. You'll hear those sort of things. And the idea there is, um, yeah, you can call it a crutch, whatever you want to call it. The all people have to have faith. We've talked about this before in other shows. Everybody has faith. You have faith. It, you can be an atheist, no matter. You have to mm-hmm. have faith in something. Okay? Whether it be faith in yourself. Yes, and you and and so what we're talking about here is well, I want to teach the kids to have mm-hmm. faith in something that has stood the test of time mm. and that can actually be counted on and can actually help to pull them through. Yeah. And so this is that idea, especially when we're in the total unknown, mm. because many of the things that our kids and us as parents that we're going to be afraid of, we really don't know how they're going to turn out. Yeah. You know, we, we don't. Yeah. But we have to start to th- really understand what promises that were made to us by God. Yeah. And if you're going to put your faith and trust in something, put it in something like God. Don't put it in yourself because... You know, we're fallen human people with weaknesses and limitations. God has none of that. And so that's why we believe he's the rock to build our lives on. And the the story of the wise and foolish builders reminds us you can either build your life on rock or sand and the storms are going to come, right? We've talked about that many, many times on our show. And so it's all dependent on, you know, how storm proof is your life. And so we believe if we build on a foundation of trust and faith and hope in peace in the Lord and not worry about the storm or tomorrow. And, and hun, there's a perfect verse for that, right? Yes. So starting in, in Matthew 6, 25, the heading of that mm. is do not worry. And, you know, again, like any of you that are maybe new to your faith or even new to scripture, I want to be really careful that this is not cliche. This mm. is not what this is, is a real digging deep to say, well, what does it really mean? Because it doesn't always seem to work out that right. way for me. But I want to read it. It's, it's mm. a little bit here. We're going 25 through 34. But actually to understand the promise that God's mm. giving us here. Yeah. It says, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. It it is not your life more than food and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not much more vulnerable Mm -hmm. than they? Valuable. Valuable, I'm sorry. (laughs) Uh, Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Mm. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe Mm. you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall I eat, or Mm. what shall I drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, Mm. and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about (laughs) itself. Each day has trouble and enough trouble of its own. Yeah, Guys, I mean... I, like I said, I, I've heard all this stuff so many times and I, I really just want to back away from, oh yeah, that's easy for you to say, okay? <laughs> and I really want you to understand that in our culture today, the pagans chase after all of these worries. Mm. The pagans, and, and the pagans are those who are trying to create the next God. Well, maybe mm. we've got this God of thunder and we've got this God of the moon. Maybe we need a new God. We, need, You know, what? we could use mm. a God of the internet because mm. we've got this new thing. And so we chase after things that we think are going yeah. to somehow solve us. And guys, this is where we are called to settle ourselves. And, and what Christ provides us. Okay? Yeah. And we all struggle with our own insecurities. I, I'm not going to lie. I mean, I still have my fear of going downhill fast. And, you know, as parents, though, the problem is we don't want to pass along our insecurities and our fears to our children. They'll have enough of their own, mm-hmm. whether it be of the dark or of snakes or whatever. And we don't want to kind of put this very irrational thinking and fear into them, whether it be swimming or riding a bike or going to friends' houses. I mean, Obviously, we want to 
warn our children and protect them, but we don't want to bubble wrap them and, and kind of build them up into these fears where they're so afraid to go live life. Yeah. Yeah. So as we wind down, remember that reasonable risk and adventures are healthy and they are necessary. Mm. They are necessary for your child to grow yeah. to, to their fullest potential. So stop handicapping them mm. by trying to be out in front of them <laughs> because you are woke, you are awake to yeah. what might harm them. Back off a little bit by your own fears and your limitations. I'm, I'm sure you probably have heard the term helicopter parent where mm. you kind of hover around yep. the child, right? To make sure everything. And there's a new one called the bulldozing parent, which kind of wants to bulldoze every conflict, every crisis, every difficulty in their life so that they don't have any troubles. Well, you're not allowing them to exercise those muscles of perseverance and resilience if you bulldoze through all the difficulties. Right. So please stop doing that and give your ch children a chance to grow into a safe, secure environment so they can be healthy, successful adults. Yeah. Let them make mistakes. Yeah. Let them get in a little bit of trouble. <laughs> Let them get dirty. Okay. Yeah. These are ultimately great things that allow them to grow. Yeah. So as we walk through and end up with our challenge, you know, we start with just making an assessment of, wow, mm -hmm. what have I actually been doing? How mm -hmm. much do I harp on the kids constantly about this or that? How much do I protect them from, oh, you can't do mm -hmm. this or you can't do that? You know, how much is this actually occurring, okay? Yeah. And then start to assess where this is actually coming from and what it's yeah. doing to your parenting, all right? Yeah. And then at that point, you know, start to actually go through the process of empowering the kids by mm. you backing off, by you letting go. All right. Yeah. That process. And, and I, and I, we, Linda and I have to do this too, right? Yep. She yep. has different insecurities than I do. And so sometimes I have to say, hon, mm. I think you need to let that one go. Yeah. And sometimes she, she needs to say stuff like that to me. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so the idea here is you can work together as a, as a parenting team. Mm. Yep. And then you start to implement, implement like, okay, this is very uncomfortable for us. Yeah. But you know what? We're just going to let it happen. Yeah. We're going to let it happen. Second Timothy 1 7 says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. And that's what we want to give our children, power, empower them to be able to make decisions and live life to the fullest and love them, God, unconditionally, like God has loved us. And so God has called us to do that as parents and then give them this gift of self-discipline where they learn to make those decisions and start to use a risk versus reward in making those decisions. And yeah, they're going to fail. They're going to mess up. You yeah. and I kind of did. No, no. Been perfect <laughs> to this point. But man, he has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity. I love that verse out of 2 Timothy 1.7. So please hang on to that and let that be what guides you in your parenting. All right. So thanks a lot mm -hmm. for listening. If you're new to our show, please give us a five-star rating. Please share the show. We need you guys yeah. to help us spread the word. And so uh, if there's anything that we can do to help you, reach out to us. You can get us on our website at rocksolidfamilies.org. Mm -hmm. Or if you would like to call us and set up a, a meeting or a, a session, uh, you can do that at 812-576-7625. Yeah. All right. Um, we want to thank our sponsors. We want to thank mm -hmm. Maxwell Construction and Casey's Outdoor Solutions. So you know what? Sign us off. Huh? Yeah. Thank you so much for listening to Rock Solid Families, Families, building a stronger community, one family at a time. Make it a great day. Rock Solid Radio wants to thank Casey's Outdoor Solutions. Casey's is a premier garden center and gift shop located in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. They offer a wide selection of high quality plants, landscaping materials, and home decor. They do amazing high quality work and can help you transform your indoor and outdoor living spaces into something beautiful. So stop by Casey's Outdoor Solutions today and let them know you appreciate their support for Rock Solid Radio. Visit Casey's today at 21481 State Line Road, Lawrenceburg, Indiana.